Hey guys, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Victober video. Uh, today, I thought I would come to you with a video about perhaps my favorite genre of Victorian classics, which is the sensation novel. And I just really, really love sensation novels. Every one that I have read so far, I have found that I have really, really enjoyed. So I thought we could talk about perhaps the three books that really started this genre, really kicked it up, and talk about the history of the sensation novel and kind of what the themes of it typically are. So the kind of genre of the sensation novel really came into popularity in the 1860s and 1870s, and it grew out of some other really popular genres that were kind of falling away by this point in time. Uh, so mainly the gothic and kind of romantic genres of writing. So the gothic genre really came into vogue in the late 1700s. That's really when it was its most popular. Uh, and there are certainly novels from the Victorian age and later that you would term gothic and that still kind of play uh, with similar tropes. But on the whole, the kind of classic gothic novel from the late 1700s, early 1800s. It had basically died away by this point. And the romantic genre, which is right now one of my favorites, is from the very late 1700s to the early 1800s. Typically, you can say the kind of romantic era ended in 1830. Uh, so right before we enter the Victorian period. And just as with the Gothic genre, there are certainly books from the Victorian age and later that you could qualify as romantic. They just don't fall as stringently under that umbrella, if that makes sense. Uh, they play with a little bit more in terms of different themes and different settings than what was really popular during the Romantic Age. But interestingly, sensation novels also grew out of a genre that is really never talked about. And I found this very interesting. Uh, when I was doing research on sensation novels as I was really getting into them, uh, they kind of grew out of something called the Newgate novel, which is essentially a criminal biography, you know, a biography of somebody who was imprisoned at Newgate. And often those were biographies that were turned into novels and were sold. They were bestsellers in their day. Uh, and so the sensation novel takes a little bit from Gothic, from Romantic, from this kind of Newgate novel genre and puts it all together in a very interesting way to make a reading experience that's really fun, but is also very interesting in a social respect. So you typically know you're dealing with a sensation novel when the book is dealing with some really crazy events. Uh, there's adultery, there's kidnapping, there's bigamy, uh, there are issues of illegitimacy, people are forging wills or forging documents, people are stealing. In some cases, you might even see some drug usage, which is typically, of course, opium from during this period of time. Uh, generally, sensation novels are dealing with something that is sensational, something that seems very out of the realm of possibility, just not something that you would come across in your everyday life. And these kind of issues of murder and intrigue and, you know, bigamy or seduction, they are very, very big themes from the gothic genre. But what separates the sensation novel from the kind of typical gothic genre is that when you're dealing with a gothic novel, a kind of true gothic novel from their real heyday, um, they are almost always taking place in a different setting, in a different location. They're in a different country or they're in a very, very creepy setting. But the sensation novels are a little bit more mundane than that. They are typically set actually in your own backyard. And so they deal with very domestic issues. They are set in a very familiar setting, which allows the sensation novel to straddle the line between reality and that sensationalism very interestingly. And it makes all of the things that are very over the top about the sensation novel seem a little bit closer to reality because they are taking place in an area that most people are familiar with. There's also typically a big mystery element to most sensation novels, even if it's not in the typical sense of somebody was murdered and we're trying to figure out who did it. There's often a mystery of 
What's going on in this house? How are these people going to get out of this situation? What's going on? How did these documents get here? There's something at play that is a big mystery element. And you can be forgiven for just thinking that these books are really fun, light reads, um, really akin to a mystery thriller today. But typically sensation novels also like to play um, with some really interesting social issues and mystery thrillers today also do this, uh, but they do it in a very interesting kind of backhanded way in that it's not always so blatantly on the page. Uh, so one of the big social issues that sensation novels really like to play with, specifically the big three that started the genre, which I will get to, um, they're dealing with this issue of maybe loss of identity or your loss of standing in society which was a very big fear for people in the Victorian age as kind of the Industrial Revolution took off. Um, people were, you know, losing their jobs to machinery and people in the higher echelons of society were kind of dealing with their way of life starting to go away and starting to change. Uh, and so this was just a big fear that people had was losing their livelihood or losing their title, losing their standing in society and the respect that people have for them because of where they are at in society and where they are at in their time of life. And I think you can see this really well in the three novels that really started this genre. Uh, and so the big three novels that kind of kicked off the sensation novel as a genre are The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. This was published between 1859 and 1860. Uh, and then you have East Lynn by Ellen Wood or sometimes Mrs. Henry Wood, you will see her termed. Uh, that was published in 1861. And then you have Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, which was published in 1862. Now, I have yet to read East Lynn. I have tried to pick it up a few times and it's never quite gripped me. Uh, so I'm not sure if East Lynn will be a misstep with me in terms of the sensation novel genre. I hope not. I hope that when I really get into it that I find that I really love it. But The Woman in White is currently my favorite Victorian classic of all time. And Lady Audley's Secret is one of my favorites. Uh, so without spoilers, I will just say that they all three seem to deal with that theme of loss of identity. Uh, and so The Woman in White is a really, really interesting case in terms of this because I think it deals with it rather blatantly. So how the action of The Woman in White kicks off is that one of the main characters, Walter Hartwright, helps a woman who is dressed all in white and he thinks there's something very off about that situation. He thinks there's something creepy, perhaps even something supernatural about her appearance on the road that night. But he comes to find out that she has escaped from an asylum. So all of the drama kicks off from there with the woman in white. East Lynn deals with an adulterous woman gaining access to her former household through some rather unconventional means. And Lady Audley's Secret focuses on a very ambitious woman who will stop at nothing to get the fortune that she wants. And so all three of these books deal quite blatantly with somebody who has lost their sense of identity or their sense of place in society. But whether that's through their own means or not is the real mystery of these books. Uh, so I don't want to say anything more about them because... I want you to read them. I don't want you to be spoiled. I think The Woman in White in particular is a really wild ride because you're constantly trying to figure things out, as is Lady Audley's Secret. In both of these books, and I assume with East Lynn that this might also be the case, you think you have things figured a certain way. You think you understand where the story is probably going to go but you're nearly always wrong. Uh, and I think that's what makes these books interesting is that they aren't just a standard mystery story or kind of a whodunit, um, but that they also try to deal with a kind of underlying social issue. Right now, I am currently reading No Name, also by Wilkie Collins, and it's also termed a sensation novel. And it deals pretty blatantly with the issue of illegitimacy, which is, in a way, its own form of loss of identity. Uh, and so I can definitely see that that's a theme in a wide variety of sensation novels. My journey with sensation novels has still really only just begun. Uh, and so I'm really excited to read more sensation novels. I know that Thomas Hardy 
uh, has his own foray into the sensation novel genre, as does Charles Dickens, technically his last published work that is unfortunately unfinished, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, is sometimes termed a sensation novel. And of course, Wilkie Collins is the master of the sensation novel. Many, many of his books uh, can technically be termed a sensation novel. So I am really looking forward to continuing my journey with this subset of Victorian classics. I would be curious to know whether or not you enjoy sensation novels. What are some of the ones that you've read? But that was a very short exploration of what I think is possibly my favorite subset of Victorian classics. Uh, but that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Happy Victober. Goodbye.